Live video is used for all kinds of things today. You can do it for product launches. You can do it for marketing your home sock making business. You can use it to comment on news media, and you can also use it to just connect with people uh, and tell your story. So today we'll be talking with one of those people who is an expert in all the different uses of live video and what it can do for you your company, your organization, or you personally. I will be talking with Fritz Brumder from Brand Live, and we're going to be getting into how to take your brand live on today's episode of Wirecast Live. Stick around. should be a fun episode. We also have some recent news, as usual, that you might want to know about in this industry. So you are watching a weekly show, and we're glad you're here. We'll be right back after these opening credits. Welcome to an episode of Wirecast Live, another episode. We're here each week on Thursdays at 2.30 p.m. Pacific Time on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. I'm your host, Andrew Haley, and this show is all about telling your story live and bringing people on who can tell their story live. We like to bring on experts in their field and talk to them about everything to do with live video production, live video streaming, what's going on in the state of the industry today, and there's always something to talk about there, and lots more not the ones who know everything, so we try to talk with people who do know more than us. And I'm excited to get into today's interview in just a bit, but before we do, you'll probably want to know where you can find us each week if you're curious or how to subscribe or if you want to catch what's coming up on the show. The easiest way is probably our email list or following us on social media. You can subscribe or for live notifications at Facebook. Twitter and YouTube, and you'll just get notified. We also have this handy dandy email list where we will send you an email with upcoming show guests and topics and titles. We just, we don't spam you. We send you about one a week, letting you know what's going on. And we notify you with a link when we're going live. So um, more coming on that actually as well. We've got some upcoming experiments we'll be doing with a landing page and embedding the video, some stuff we've been wanting to do for a while. So it should be fun. Um, for those of you who are tuning in on your respective channel, I have your comments here. I should be able to see them. So um, when I just click my handy get comments button, um, I can see what you're doing. So here we go. Vicky, good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Deb, nice to have you on. And Chris, hey, good to see you, man. So thanks for tuning in, you guys. And I also have, let's see if I can pull in some, twe some tweets and um, some YouTube comments as well. Looks like we have Matthew on YouTube and Colleen and Greg. Great to see you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And um, I have the comments here in my social media uh, tool, but um, because we had some audio driver issues, uh, we didn't have time to test to see if we can get those on screen. So I'm hoping at some point during the show I can actually throw those on screen live so we can actually display them. But in the meantime, I do have them here and I can read them. And if you have questions for Fritz or any of the topics we cover today, just ch chat them in or type them in and um, either somebody will be able to comment back to you directly and answer a question or we can even put it on the air and, uh, and talk about it. So Let's get into it. First of all, what's coming up next week? We have, I'm excited to announce next week's episode, just so you can mark your calendars, Mr. Brian Matias from the No Photo Show. He's a photographer, he's a podcaster, and we will be talking about how to prepare your content for topical and relevant live shows. Um, he's, a, he's really good about making shows that are excellently sort of produced and prepared, and he preps everything ahead of time, and he's a number of tools that he's going to be sharing with us on how he preps for his live shows and um you might even say he's a little bit of an over preparer so he's a great person to learn from and you can really see how he uh does it and we'll talk all about that next week so that should be a fun one that'll be next thursday so uh again we'll send you out an invite and then um we have a new segment on this show i, I guess it's not so new we're a little we're into february now January kind of flew by, and uh, we're calling it the News of the Week. So, doesn't necessarily mean it happened this week, but I do try to make it in the last month or so, but because we're telling you about it right now. So here we go. 
Topic number one, Facebook. Facebook has announced, if you didn't hear this, Mark Zuckerberg posted a big post recently saying they are going to be changing the the algorithm. What appears in your news feed? So uh, up till now, you know, you've been seeing all kinds of stuff, maybe not related to you, not that interesting to you, um, or sponsored content. And he's basically, I think this all came out of the idea that, you know, the, the 20 sort of 17 election or 2018 election, um, uh, actually 2016 election, I'm sorry. Um, the 2016 election was sort of had all this fake news and there's all these people able to hijack your newsfeed just by paying for different kind of content. Um, so a big controversy and, and, and so I think Facebook's response to this has been, hey, we're gonna re-approach this um, algorithm. They say it's because they've been doing research and they find that in general, the newsfeed doesn't make you happy. It makes people sad. And they have these sort of social scientist researchers who are watching people and studying people who interact with the newsfeed. So they want to um, put in more personal content, more f- content from your friends and family, more content that's directly relevant to you. So t- it will increase your happiness and what you want, um, what you get out of the newsfeed. Uh, this may be bad news for brands, for advertisers, for people who are trying to get their message out there. It's a bit of controversial. They say, you know, we pay for everything that is happening on Facebook. So we, you know, it, it sucks that we're losing more reach and more access. Um, you know, we'll have to see these changes and how they go, but it's a very interesting uh, change that's going to be coming down the pipe. So the next topic that you'll want to, that we're covering this week is Mr. Um, Leonardo, and I'm going to hopefully pronounce his name correctly, Chiar, Chiarglioni, Chiarglioni um, who is the co-founder and the head of the Motion Pictures Expert Group, which is uh, commonly referred to as MPEG, uh, is, has recently posted on his blog a, a big article about the crisis and the sort of maybe the downfall of HEVC, which is the high efficiency video codec. This is was supposed to be the successor to the AVC, advanced video codec, which is probably what you're watching me on right now. That's how this video gets compressed and sent out to you on Facebook and YouTube and the rest. Um, Advanced video codec is what's often called H.264, H.264, and HEVC was supposed to be the next one, H.264. 265, which is more advanced. It does uh, higher sort of pixel um, and resolutions more efficiently and uh, was designed to kind of take us into the next phase of video with 4K and 2K and 8K and you know, just better and AR and VR and mixed reality stuff. So that is where the industry is going. But the problem is, and you can kind of learn a little bit more about this with my conversation with Jan Ozer when he was on the show a little while ago, uh, an episode or two back. And um, we got into this. Uh, It's very interesting if you want to dive into it. But basically, HEV is a bit of a mess. HEVC is a bit of a mess because people are trying to get paid. Uh, There's a lot of people own the intellectual property around that codec. And they couldn't, and a lot of companies, and they couldn't really agree on a, uh, like a a coordinated patent um, strategy or, or payment strategy or model so that if people could use the technology and not be um, raked over the coals when it came to paying for it and using it. So because there was all these patent holders and they couldn't agree, um, it just never really got anywhere um, and didn't take over as everyone kind of expected that it would. And out came a new alliance called the Open Video Alliance, I think, the Open Media... um, I. I'm going to butcher that. I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, this new alliance that was going to take this new standard that would basically compete with HEVC and be a better alternative and a free alternative based on sort of the um, codex and technologies that Google's been developing. So anyway, all this is to say that uh, the head of MPEG, who's kind of in charge of HEVC, has sort of said it doesn't look good for HEVC, and he predicts that this is going to be a problem for advancing, because if there's no money, he says that it's going to take down, um, that there's not going to be a lot of advancement in the technology because no one's getting paid for it. You can kind of decide for yourself. But if you're curious, head over to, actually, I'll show you on my screen here. You can go to blog.chiariglioni.org 
or you could just search for Leonardo Chiarglioni, and uh, you can read this inst- interesting article. Also, uh, Jan Ozer did a nice article on this on streamingmedia.com, and he can kind of summarize it and cover a lot of, you know, you can get his conclusions from it, so head over there if you're curious for that. And then um, finally, the Intel Studios. I actually want to load this clip up, Deborah Lee. Let's just show this real fast. Intel announced that they are going to, and let's we can take this full screen, um, that they are going to open a new studio in LA. Intel is a chip manufacturer. You may be familiar with them. And let's just watch this clip real fast. So you're seeing some matrix stuff here, the camera's flying around, and you're kind of asking yourself, where the heck is this camera? What camera can do this? Um, And what's happening here is what's called volumetric, volumetric capture, which allows, basically happens in a totally 360 degree cage, and the actors sort of uh, all do the, the scene, and there's cameras and sensors all around them that basically allow uh, you to recreate the action in a, a basically a complete sort of digital virtual room, and your camera can fly around anywhere in it using predictions and um, some cool stuff. So volumetric capture is sort of a, the future that Intel wants to bring about for Hollywood and immersive movies, which is kind of, um, again, going to think be a really interesting new technology for watching movies Uh, we've seen 360 video but it's very flat you can't kind of do anything with it you just sort of stand in one spot and look around this for the first time allows you to sort of enter the movie and um, it should be a neat new technology that uh, could change a lot of things so Intel Studios you can find out more about that at um, Variety they're talking about that you can also find out more at stream media um, and uh, Other sites out there. So those are our news for the week news items If you have any comments or questions about those things, please leave them in the news feed um, and I will bring them on and without further ado and let's just go through these real fast looping video needs muting that's Matthew's feedback. Okay. Thank you um Lower your local. All right. We got lots of tech tips from Matthew. He's a great producer. So thank you there, Matthew. And we have in the YouTube chat. Looks like um, some cool stuff. Vicky says, that's amazing. I'm not sure, Vicky, if you're referring to the volume. I assume the volumetric capture or things like that, which would be pretty cool. And I'm going to just make sure I refresh. All right. Cool. Well, leave more comments if you have any, uh, you want to put something on screen or if you have a question about any of that. Um, And I'd like to introduce our guest for today. Let's get into our topic. So he is the CEO and the founder of Your Brand Live or brandlive.com. You go to brand.live and they handle big launches and live video sort of portals and all kinds of services for major brands, announcements, product launches, and lots more. His name is Fritz Brumder, and we have been working with them for a while. They use Wirecast there to help produce and provide services to their clients, and they are doing a killer job at this. If you see some of the stuff that they've done, they're amazing. They do polished, amazing productions, and they integrate all kinds of media, including live video, and use live video in interesting new ways. He just had a great new... um, webinar yesterday with IBM and IBM Cloud and Live Video, and they talked all about their new benchmark report, which they have just released, which we will get to during the course of our conversation. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Fritz Brumder, who's joining us live. Hey, Fritz. Hey, good to see you, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for being on the show, and uh, appreciate you making time for us. You are in Portland, is that correct? Yes, we're here in Portland, Oregon, but we have... uh, really operations all around the country and around the world. Awesome. And so when did you, when did Brand Live begin? When did you start the company? Yeah, uh, my early entry into live video was started in about the 2010 timeframe. Um, I come from the software background as well as traditional video production, worked in Hollywood and New York for quite a while. And I saw the trend in online video really exploding and live video ended up becoming my passion. So we 
approached early brands and retailers and said, hey, you're going to want to find ways to get your products to market faster, to reach more consumers in an e-commerce world, and to train and educate your workforces that are going to be global workforces. And so that was like 2010 to 2012 or 13 timeframe. Mm -hmm. We got our initial set of customers and really started to build the use cases around brand and retailer live video. And then in 2014 was really when we took off as a company and we've been growing very nicely ever since. We're an Inc. 500 fastest growing company in America and uh, we have some of the best brands and retailers in the world that we work with. That's awesome. So um, how big uh, are you guys now? How many um, employees are you guys got? We have uh, 32 full-time employees plus another 20 or so contractors. Uh, We have something called the Brand Live uh, Production Partner Network. So these are freelance video producers around the world that we pre-negotiate uh, contractor rates. We hire them as a day rate like you would with any traditional video, audio video producer or cinematographer, director of photography, et cetera. Those types of folks are who we're looking for. Uh, and of course, we want them to be uh, experts in Wirecast and either they have already used Wirecast before or we train and educate them a little bit uh, on the platform. And then usually they pick it up well if they've used things like Final Cut or Adobe Premiere for their um, recorded video content production. Fantastic. Do you make that list publicly available or is it just for you know internal use when you know somebody hires you guys? Yeah, it's it's just for internal use. We have considered making like a public portal of people that you can search and find certified video producers, but right now we have enough capacity with all of our customers around the world where they need to run a live event, they give us the location and the date, how many presenters, what kind of content, how many cameras we might need, and then we source through our production partner network to find the right person to go on site and produce it for them. That's awesome. So um, I actually want to show, uh, you provided this amazing guide um, uh, that is called the Live Video Inspiration Guide, and I assume that this is free to download at brand, brand.live on the website. And, yeah, correct. Okay, so I just want to show this, um, pull this up on my desktop here. So this is the live video inspiration guide. It's amazing what you guys have done here um, with uh, some of the sort of big brands. I mean, everything looks amazing. I can see that you've custom designed the video portals. Uh, there's like, you know, question and comment panels. Like it looks like you you really do talk with the clients and depending on the event, completely change the look and what's available around it. Um, I wouldn't call it yet, like it's not quite a webinar, it's not quite a uh, like a, a live, you know, Facebook or YouTube stream. It's sort of this hybrid of everything um, that I'm seeing here. Can you talk a little bit about what this guide is for and sort of some of the examples that we're seeing here um, and what you try to do when you build one of these events or these live streaming portals. Yeah, definitely. So uh, first of all, we're primarily a software company. We sell the software platform that allows you to create, edit, and manage all of these live event pages. So as you can see, the kind of core functionality on each page is the same but the brand look and feel and the imagery associated with it all changes. And our customers are logging into our software to manage and edit all of that content. Mm -hmm. Most of our customers, as you can see below the video, are talking about some kind of product. Uh, It's an easy way to describe. We're basically like QVC out of the box on your website. So if you (laughs) want to run a live video event talking about the newest products that you're launching, either to internal audiences or to to external audiences, you can do that um, with the click of a button with BrandLive. Um, of course, all of our events require video production, and that's where the production partner network and uh, Wirecast come into play. We either train and educate our customers on how to produce the video, uh, or we help produce it. We have a two-person production team here at BrandLive, and then the rest are freelance producers. That's really cool. So, yeah. um, I, I, what are you finding is um, sort of the when a when a brand sort of is anybody doing regular weekly broadcasts on these portals for their you know companies or their brands or are they typically just doing one off launches and events? Yeah, we almost all of our customers are annual programs with us, and we have many customers that are doing. Uh, anywhere from 150 to 300 live events per year. Mm -hmm. And 
some of those are direct to consumer. So you would see them on their website, simulcast to social, just like we're doing here today. Uh, and a lot of them, the majority of them are internal focus. So like you said, it's not really a webinar, but it kind of looks like a webinar in the, the way that you differentiate brand live versus like Skype or Zoom or GoToMeeting or WebEx or anything like that. Um, because we're broadcast video, you can produce a much higher quality of video content and in, in a one-to-many format. So most of our audience sizes are in the hundreds to thousands and, and tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. For example, we've done you know internal uh, product launches, sales meetings that have uh, 10 and 20,000 attendees globally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do you find that um, the that you know that the people that are using this are there features that you're still um, adding or that are are you know that you you're being asked for something you didn't expect that the brand live um, platform is you've kind of built it to offer I mean what are some sort of as some tools that you're finding that are extremely useful and that the clients tend to use all the time or are beginning to request more of yeah, our training use cases for live video have really started to explode. And so we had built something called um, Video LMS. It's basically a way to create either live or pre-recorded video content in a series of lessons and courses that you can then invite people to, have them complete the video-based training, pass a quiz, and they get certified as a result of that. And as we know, you know, everybody in their uh, consumer lives are seeing video on their social channels or they're watching, um, you know, over the top video content on the internet. And so they expect inside of their companies that they're going to be seeing more and more video content. We've seen some studies that suggest over 80% of internet traffic is going to be video based. And, and if that's true, then more and more content within the enterprise or within brands and retailers is going to be on video. And the training use cases for that are, highly repeatable. So that that's an aspect of our platform that has continued to develop uh, as the customer demand grows for it. Yeah, I can see. So you're almost becoming an online learning resource as well for with courses and curriculum and quizzes and all kinds of stuff. That's really interesting. Did you see it going in that direction or was that a bit of a surprise to you? Um, you know, early on that started. Uh, we initially started with the e-commerce angle of launching products live on your website with the goal of converting on sales. But as soon as we took that to our major customers, the light bulb moment went on for them right away where they said, there's some audiences within our company that if we can get in front of them in a more efficient and visual and interactive way, there, there's a strong ROI for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why you see in the inspiration guide, we have e-commerce, marketing, and training use cases. So if you go to brand.live, download that uh, inspiration guide, just kind of peek through some of the, there's some text in there that kind of helps you, helps guide you through the different examples. And the whole purpose behind it is of course, to get you inspired for new ways that you can incorporate live video into your business. <laughs> That's really cool. Okay, so um, if you're curious about that inspiration guide and kind of see some of the examples uh, in each category, both the commerce, training, and the um, marketing side of things, uh, each section is really well fleshed out. It shows great examples of companies and brands that are doing this. Um, let's talk really uh, go back a little and talk a little bit about you personally and your background. Um, you said you were in the film and video industry, even Hollywood. Um, you know. Can you talk a little bit about what brought you to video and live video um, and in general and kind of how you became the CEO and founder of a company? I mean, it must be quite a journey to go from sort of uh, working in the industry to sort of founding your own company with your own vision. What was that like? Yeah, it's uh, the only reason I'm laughing is today is a, a perfect example of that. I, I don't want to bore you with the details, but the amount of different things I have done today from <laughs> producing video to being on video with you to being to talking to investors and et cetera, it's uh, it's pretty a lot crazy. Of hats, yeah. <laughs> yes. Many, many hats. Um, but it is a lot of fun. And the initial genesis for that, I have a uh, undergraduate film degree. So I got into documentary film production. Uh, on VHS, I'll date myself a little bit. The very first videos I was creating were on VHS, then Hi8, then Mini DV, 
And finally, we were starting to get towards true digital rather than just tape digital. Uh, and at that time, I worked on commercial productions. We were still shooting film at that time, commercials, uh, a couple movies. I worked on a, a number of video art pieces that ended up in the Guggenheim Museum and the Getty Museum. And I really enjoyed that process. But uh, video production is incredibly time consuming and wasteful. And it's just not that fast from content creation or creative process to um, people accessing the content, right? In the old days of shooting a film, it's months or years before you're sitting down in a theater and watching that. And that was the part that I was a little bit frustrated with. And so right around 2006 timeframe, I was in San Francisco. Um, YouTube really exploded at that time. If you remember back, I think it was 2006, YouTube was on the cover of Time Magazine. And the cover was actually just a, a picture of the YouTube player and so there was no person uh, on the cover of Time Magazine. Right, right. Yeah, it was, it was YouTube. And so that was the first light bulb moment where I realized, okay, the internet is going to drastically change the delivery of live or of video in general. And so I started experimenting with that first. And then I found out about live video. And I knew that there was going to be more opportunities. So this is well before Periscope. Uh, Facebook Live didn't exist at the time. In fact, we built a uh, live video tab or app inside of Facebook that was one of the Facebook tabs. And we were doing live video product launches and live video e-commerce events in 2011, 12, 13, and 14, um, all before any social live video existed. YouTube Live was kind of starting, but it was that wasn't as big of a splash as Periscope and uh, I guess Meerkat, which went away, and then um, Facebook Live, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, YouTube was really early in on the game, but I think people didn't even quite realize it for a while. And then, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, then, then, as you say, it kind of progressed from there. So, really, now, I mean, this is the this is the wave right now. It feels like it's about ten years, maybe later than uh, you know, um, maybe some might have expected. But here it is. We've arrived, and I feel like we're you're right in the thick of it. Um, and I think your video benchmark, your live video benchmark report, is actually a great example of that. Um, and kind of actually uh, uh, classifies or, or uh, gets some statistics on that and some numbers on where we're at with that. So I'd like to jump to that. Before we do, I see in the comments, Colleen, um, if you uh, want, you were wondering where to get that live video inspiration guide. So let me just show you the easiest way to find it. Um, and Trevor or Deborah Lee, if you in the um, studio could just add in the chat maybe some links um, to these guides. But um, the uh, the easiest way is just go to Google. I just typed in brand live video inspiration guide, and it was the first search re result. So let me um, show you. Just type that in, and then you can go here. The first result brand live video inspiration guide and then click there and then you can go to their site and they will you can download the form um, and get it uh, and go through that if you want some ideas um, I would be a little remiss like is this is your platform right for individuals Do you have affordable plans for people without a lot of money or is this something that really only fortune 500 companies can afford yeah we are definitely targeted at the upper end of the brand and retail market, you know, our price points start on an annual contract over $20,000 per year. So it's not really designed for uh, individual content creators mm -hmm. at this current time, but we have launched uh, mobile broadcasting and we're uh, looking to make the ability for branded live video content more and more pervasive. Mm -hmm. uh, we just economically, we have to start at the high end of the market because that's where the dollars are. I understand. Uh, you got to yes. pay for all this cool stuff you're developing. Yes. Um, so Fritz, let's talk a bit about the benchmark um, uh, guide. Now, the benchmark guide is fascinating. Again, I'll pull this up on my web on my um, uh, site, but if you want to get a copy of this, you can actually go. We've made a short link for you at telestream.net slash brand live. Just go to telestream.net slash brand live, and that will redirect you to the page um, on their site where you can get this report. This is hot off the presses, and it is a um, live video streaming benchmark report. Uh, Fritz, can you talk a little bit about the idea behind this report? How long did it take you to kind of get this all compiled and get the data? And then let's talk about some of the big takeaways. 
Yeah, so this is actually the second version of the report. We did it once about a year and a half ago, and we built the survey to help align with some of the questions that we had asked in the past. We had over 200 respondents from uh, primarily brands and retailers. Uh, there were some agencies in there as well, but for the most part, it was uh, delivered that the responses were brands and retailers. Mm-hmm. Um, 30% of them actually were retailers, 16% agencies, and the remainder were brands. Uh, and so we did this in partnership with IBM. So it's a combination of uh, external audiences, our customers, and their customers, and we bring that all together. And we started with things like, uh, is live video a priority for you? Is it on the radar enough that you are spending your time and energy and strategy creating new use cases for live video? Mm-hmm. And actually, 95% of brands and retailers said that it's a top priority for them in 2018, which is fantastic. Um, we also see a, a surprising percentage of the respondents are using live video beyond social media. So this is point number two here. 64% of companies are using live video beyond social media uh, by the end of 2018. Okay. And it, The details behind that, 44% of them have already done it in 2017, Mm -hmm. and another 20% plan to do it in 2018. And so that's, you know, it's been fantastic that Facebook and Periscope have, uh, and Twitter have really uh, risen the profile for what live video is and what it can be, but that's such a small percentage of all of the opportunity and use case within live video. And so we're starting to see people realize that, which is fantastic. Yeah, I completely agree with that. In fact, I would count us in that 20% or so that are planning to do that, it, do it in um, uh, 2018. And we've, uh, to this point, just because we, we have limited bandwidth here and the amount of time we can devote to spinning up um, and planning an entire distribution plan beyond just our social and marketing channels um, and our mm-hmm. YouTube channel and our Vimeo channels like we um, have definitely wanted to take more ownership and actually use um, uh, you know a branded portal where we can put our own resources and and everything even for these shows so uh, very similar uh, to uh, what I think you're getting from a lot of respondents is that Facebook's great YouTube's great but you just don't you know, it's a limited to a certain extent. You're going to be impacted and monetizing your content for them, not necessarily um, your first goal for a lot of your content. Yeah, and there's a few things driving that, in which your news topic started with this, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't control that what Mark and Facebook want to do or need to do to make their primary audience as happy as possible. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think to a certain extent, that's right. You know, people went to Facebook to... Uh, connect with their friends and family, not to get news or definitely not to get branded content from people. Right. And so in the long tail, I think that that's going to be the case that you're going to want to create brand advocates and brand evangelists. And those people are then going to share your content in Facebook. And that will be hugely powerful. But you as a brand are not are going to have less chance and opportunity to reach those folks. And it's going to be less, the payoff will be lower. So what we find is that uh, average view times for live video, especially on owned and operated channels, are significantly longer than social. If we compare usually a consumer-facing brand live event, so the content that lives on their owned and operated website, uh, would have an average view time of like 15 to 20 minutes for a consumer-facing audience. On social, the average view time is usually less than a minute. So the payoff is much, much higher if you can get the audience to engage with you on your own and operated channels. Got it. And um, so what would be some, I mean, I think that would probably be your number one tip, I would assume, to people watching right now that want to kind of talk, you know, take more ownership and, and have more impact on the types of live ways they're using live content and directly to their audience. Um, what would be some other big tips for you for people watching, uh, whether they're using Wirecast, whether they already own it, or whether they're thinking about using it to uh, take their brand live. Now, we could be a product, could be a service, um, but uh, what if some of the things that, what are some of the things that you've learned um, doing this now for the last uh, five years or so? And um, what could you kind of, what tips could you impart to someone who's just getting started? Yeah, definitely. Well, I, uh, I think that the content is paramount, right? So creating uh, 
good format of content, we call it a run of show, creating a good format that is very engaging to the audience. For example, yesterday when we launched the benchmark report, um, we came up with an idea probably only 30 to 40 minutes before the event launched where we filled up these small little glass jars full of con or ingredients for a trail mix. And one of our customers is Stanley. You know, they make the old uh, green uh, thermos. They have a new version of it now, but you can probably picture a classic like camping thermos made oh, yeah. by Stanley. And for every data point that we shared, we poured the contents for the trail mix into the Stanley thermos. And then we had the audience guessing how many individual pieces were in the trail mix and whoever got it right ended up winning the Stanley. <laughs> and it was incredible throughout the entire broadcast. We had people kind of chiming in on that topic. But then once we got to the end, the highest engagement part of the event was all the way at the end. And kind of the, the curve for watching the content was going like this. So <laughs> more and more people were staying and watching right. versus if you look at recorded video, it usually like goes down. like this, right? Yeah, yeah. Tails, down, tails down. And so just by creating a Suspense. interesting hook to the content that you've created, <laughs> yeah. Uh, is is hugely valuable. So think about how you're structuring the content um, is my number one tip. Yeah, that's something we've been playing around with a lot. We don't have a lot of time on this show to kind of rehearse and practice things. You know, we usually are running in here five, 10 minutes, you know, before the show or, but, you know, as we can get to it. And so um, one of the things that we play around with is structure and pacing and content. And I love that idea of sort of, doling out some sort of prize throughout the episode that that again just keeps circling back to the topics but then keeps a reason for people to sort of um keep watching that's a wonderful yeah. uh tip what are some other uh sort of engagement tools that you use on your platform I, do you have over screen overlays that you can throw up on the screen like a like an html5 layer or something on top of the player um, for interactive tips um, one of the news items i considered doing today was this and maybe i can talk about it next week um, is this um, relatively new um, app called HQ Trivia, which is a fun live streaming trivia app on your mm -hmm. your phone, and they go live twice a day, and uh, they have a, a wonderful pop up layer on top of the player in the app that allows you to interact in real time with the video. And we've heard about this clickable and shoppable video with clickable links and layers inside the video. Is that something you're already experimenting with? Are there some tools out there that you've seen that you like for that? Yeah, it is definitely something that we have spent a lot of time building product around. The first thing that's important is um, Brand Live is not just a player experience. It's it actually incorporates all of the content around the player. Mm -hmm. And so the product content just below the video, the quiz content, and then the uh, chat and inter interactivity features that are usually on the right hand side of our function. Are, are all kind of intertwined together and are all interactivity features that individual users can either navigate themselves or the moderator can be updating those in real time. Uh, and then those majority of those are connected to social too. So you can either share the entire experience or you can share a portion of it. You can share comments that have happened on Twitter, for example, and post those back to Brand Live, uh, Twitter listeners, et cetera. There's a long list of, of ways that we connect to a lot of uh, interactivity. And then inside of the video player, we're mostly producing that, you know, our customers either are doing that with Wirecast, you know, lower thirds and um, overlays and things like that. Uh, yeah, so that's how, that's how it all comes together. That's awesome. Um, some of our viewers like uh, Chris and some of the other folks are actually pretty good hands with Wirecast and cameras and live video production, and that's something they are passionate about and like to do. Where should they go if they want to get in touch with you to become a certified brand live video production partner or um, specialist? Yeah, that would be fantastic, actually. We are actively looking to grow that network right now. Um, so you can just email me directly, fritz at brand.live, or um, you could also email Renee. She's our operations production operations director, and she runs that program, Renee, R-E-N-E-E, -E, at brand.live. Deborah, let's throw up their contact card. There you go. Perfect. So yeah. um, these are some good ways to get in touch with you. Uh, fritz at brand.live. Brand that's an easy email to remember. Uh, yes. Some other things. Um, 
if you uh so you know you talked about getting you know pacing your content getting it more engaging as you go um uh, i think that's a wonderful idea do you guys also strategize with brands do you offer marketing strategies on how to best sort of utilize the platform and maximize like ideas like that trail mix idea which is great um did someone actually have to physically like count all the pieces who was the person who did that <laughs> Yes, to a certain extent. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to say we Good estimated, but, but we may have <laughs> a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There is Let's some just show this. Yeah, the number of pieces was over a thousand, and the highest guess was nine hundred and ninety-nine, and that person won. There you go. So there you go. Yeah. Um, um, so we have uh, because our primary business model is uh, a software platform. We basically create templates and ideas and suggestions. That's why we do things like the live video inspiration guide uh, to help the large base of customers get inspired all at the same time. And so we're less like uh, getting into the customer and finding out ways for them to use live video within their individual strategy. And we're more promoting the use cases of live video in general. Mm -hmm. Uh, with that said, we do each customer gets a customer success manager, and those people are usually aligned to a specific vertical or type of customers. For example, we have uh, lots of athletic footwear customers, and we learn a tremendous amount by working with all of them because the business is basically the same thing. And we can then come up with better ideas and better serve our entire customer base because we have a unique knowledge and expertise around that specific vertical. Uh, we have one in healthcare, for example, as well, fashion and beauty. Uh, and so that's, that's usually beneficial to the customers coming up with unique ideas for live video. Got it. Okay. And do you guys have like one-off rental plans, like where you can go for just a month or like, uh, just so someone can cover, you know, one big event they're planning on doing, or, uh, is it, yeah. you start at the annual? No, we do have uh, one-time events, mm -hmm. uh, so we can do are there events that you're already putting on. That's a big use case, of course, for live video because the cost to do an in-person event is so dramatically high. Adding live video to that is a fraction of the cost, and you can get you know reach a much larger audience. And so that's a big one-time event use case for us. Uh, and then we have other folks that just haven't experimented much with live video yet and so they're looking to test or pilot it but once you get into it there are so many use cases i think in the study we identified like 13 different use cases that customers are adopting or that the respondents are adopting for live video and once you start to map those out across the year there's lots of different ways that you can use live video which means you want to make it repeatable and that's really what we're all about is trying to make live video repeatable so that it's easy to do it you know every day every week every month very cool um okay what is uh so you you say you use wirecast pretty regularly for these what is one of the things or how are you using wirecast and uh you know what is your sort of gear setup how do you like to use it when um you deploy a team are you guys using it on laptops are you taking out dedicated uh, PC hardware that you've built. Um, what are some of the sort yeah. of takeaways that you've learned as Wirecast operators and people being from pretty, very familiar with it? Yeah, we essentially s surveyed the market of switchers and cameras and sound and lighting, and we came up with uh, studio packages for our customers to buy, and those are all made by you know great companies like Telestream or. Uh, Canon is most of the cameras that we use. Sennheiser is most of the mics that we use. So a typical production setup is two to three logs, um, usually Sennheiser, uh, two, one or two cameras. And then we have two different setups that they can use for switching. Either we go um, SDI or HDMI out of the cameras into Blackmagic mini recorders and then to Thunderbolt or to USB and into the computer, and then within Wirecast, we set up our multiple shots, multiple layers, and we can switch you know, a three camera setup plus some recorded video content or PowerPoints or other layers that we can add into that. We can, we can produce or we can teach our customers how to produce a really nice show using Wirecast in that way. Um, or we also have a partnership with Roland, 
And uh, there's a great video, actually, if you Google search Roland and Brand Live, mm -hmm. you'll find a video on the VR4, which is a, a really nice switcher that you can connect to Wirecast so you can take the camera switching into a traditional um, TV switcher device. Yeah, just that first video there yeah. is the one. Uh, it's, a, it's a really great video. It actually shows like all the background details. Um, that's our office right there. That's where I am right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a typical studio setup. So you've got the Roland there on the left, and you have Wirecast running on the right. And um, this is our platform. So that's what it looks like to manage all of your events. Here's an example customer. As you can see, you know, they're you know, talking about footwear. Uh, Ethan is one of our producers. And on the right there, the audience can ask questions. So it's a pretty typical studio setup, and that uh, program is very portable too. We we can we have a small partnership with Pelican, and so all that fit stuff can fit inside of a Pelican case that can go on a plane, and you can really take it wherever you need to produce your live video event. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So what I did actually was I put your equipment packages in the link here for uh, in Facebook, and I'm gonna just head over to um, uh, to uh, YouTube as well, and I'll throw that in there. And it looks like you guys put up a blog post about the um, uh, about the equipment packages that you're recommending. Yep. So the equipment you, I think you're showing off in the video here. So. Um, what I'd love to do is, um, let's just do this. Okay. I've got to throw this in the YouTube chat to that. Yeah. Great. And then people will have those. Yeah. Links. There, there you go. So that's, you know, showing wirecast and how we, in this case, connect the Roland to it. Uh, and the Roland is nice cause it has a soundboard built into that as well. Mm hmm. Um, and you can still take advantage of all the great features of Wirecast and different layers and, and really produce a very nice show with that. That thing is slick. Yeah, I have to ask yeah. Roland to send us one to play around with here. Um, and one yeah. thing that's nice about that is that it offloads all the camera sort of switching to the the hardware chips on the on the switcher, and then Wirecast just has to worry about some graphics and the encoding and, the, and what destinations you're streaming to. You got it, yep. Cool. Well, uh, uh, we showed your contact card, and um, I want to uh, let me just throw up the the blog post that I was showing with the equipment packages. I'd love to maybe play that video. It looks like it's a Vimeo video here. Uh, you can. I also found this just by going to Brand Live Equipment Package. I just searched for that on Google, and let's yep. um, maybe throw this up real fast. It looks like there's a great little post on some of the stuff that you guys recommend. Yes. Cool. Um, and yeah, and this Sennheisers and the mixer. Yep, there you go. Fantastic. All right. Well, um, yeah, I believe you could throw up um, Fritz's contact information again, uh, and, and just Fritz, where's the best place to kind of you know reach you? What do you like to respond to more? Tweets or emails or both? Uh, Obviously, we man, don't I, totally I was, inundate you here, but um, yeah, if people have yeah, questions or they want to start yeah, um, question. maybe uh, looking to hire Brand Live for something they're doing. Yeah, I mean, if you have a if you have a tweetable length question, that's definitely the place. Okay. Uh, if you have a more detailed question or you're interested in learning more about our programs and our software, Brand Live, then shoot me an email. Cool. And uh, if you want to be one of those folks who uh, kind of goes out and helps Brand Live produce these events for their customers and clients, it sounds like a pretty fun event. And I'm looking for that big baller brand launch on uh, on Brand Live soon of their shoes with yep. the the, <laughs> the balls. Um, and uh, and uh, can't wait for that to come. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, so Fritz, thanks so much for being on the show today. And everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today and um, showing this off. And I have one last question looks like from Deb. Uh, which event would you recommend for the latest and greatest video photography, et cetera? Um, I'm not sure I quite know what she means by event there. Which event would you recommend? Maybe she's talking about equipment there, or maybe she's talking about um, how you can, you know, if if. Yeah, I'm not sure there, Deb. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to uh, clarify the question there a little bit. Um, but it, I assume that all of the videographers you work with 
are very highly trained and well certified and you like their work because you guys have some pretty yeah. major clients. Yeah, I mean, definitely you need to have at least, you know, multiple years of video production background um, because obviously in the video world, uh, cameras, mics, lighting all take tweaking depending on the environment that you're putting them in. So we need people to be able to overcome those challenges in real time and uh, maintain a calm head. And then, of course, when you add live video broadcasting on top of that, it's it's another layer of professionalism. So True. That, that is very important. You've got to keep calm and carry on, and the show must go on. Yes. And all that good yes. stuff. Well, Fritz, thanks so much for being on here today. And Actually, I had a um, yeah, just a one, one point on that. So uh -huh. you mentioned, you know, you guys are tight on time, and you know, creating interactivity is uh, sometimes an afterthought, right? Well, so one of the things we screwed up on basically was we didn't plan how much content could fit inside of the thermos, and so like halfway through the event, we were pouring in all the ingredients and it started flowing over the top, which actually ended up becoming the best part of the whole thing. <laughs> so uh, my advice is don't plan it, just do it and then see what happens. It'll be what it is and it'll be much better than not doing anything. Else. I think that's great. Um, I uh, happy, happy accidents and serendipity have played roles in some of the content and the things I'm most proud of in my life because yeah. Sometimes fortune just walks in and just does it way better than you could have ever planned it or thought it. So great advice uh, from an expert at live video. So Fritz, thanks so much. We will catch up with you later. If you guys do want to check out those equipment packages that they recommend, I think there's some very good stuff there. Um, check out their live video inspiration guide or go check out the video benchmark report if you're curious on the state of the industry when it comes to um, you know how brands and major companies are beginning to use more and more live video and how you might apply it in your own life, even if you don't necessarily uh, you know, have the the bucks to hire Brand Live full out. Um, maybe you can learn from some of the techniques and the the things that Fritz is, and his team are developing. And hopefully soon there may be a, a price level that um, will work for you guys. And Fritz, we will keep tabs on you and be in touch. And hopefully I'll see you when I'm up in Portland. Okay, that sounds great. All right, thanks, thanks so much. Bye bye. Yeah, bye bye. Okay, so folks, that was how to take your brand live and some of the tips, tricks, and tools that uh, Fritz and the team up there have developed. As you can see, they've developed a really cool platform. Um, they have a great eye and aesthetic, and uh, they know what their clients want after having done this for a long time. And what's even cooler, I thought, was the fact that uh, they are still learning that content is king. They are still realizing that you may have a slick video production, you may have great audio, you may have everything, but if you're not sort of pouring trail mix into a Stanley thermos, um, th those are the little magic things that really make uh, you know the content shine and, and take it to that next level. So what can we learn? What's your Stanley thermos going to be? I'm going to think about that for our next episode, um, which actually is all about playing planning your live show for engaging and relevant and topical stuff with Brian Matias, who will be on the show next week. And Brian's a great guy, another Portland guy, actually. Um, not any longer, but, uh, you know, formerly of Portland. And uh, a wonderful photographer will be covering some of his stuff and bringing him on the show live to talk about how he preps and plans for shows. And maybe we can talk a little bit about that serendipity thing. So thanks so much for you, all of you who left comments and questions. I really appreciate you leaving those. I'm sorry I couldn't get those on the screen today. Um, again, we're just a little, uh, you know, we just get in the studio and we shoot, turn on the cameras and go when we can go and not everything always works. We just gotta go, go, go. Um, I'd like to thank our our partners and our technology sponsors and people who help us get this show on the air with various pieces of equipment. Couldn't do it without them. And of course, thank you to all of you, the viewers, for making this uh, possible and showing up each week. You can find us every week, 2.30 p.m. Pacific time, and we'll be back here next week um, with Brian Matias. And if you want that email in your inbox, just sign up there and we'll do that. Thanks so much again. This has been another episode of Wirecast Live. I really hope to see you next week when we talk with Brian and talk more about prepping for live videos and live shows. Take care and so long. <laughs>